back here again with another tutorial on how to create a water drop effect in Photoshop. And we're going to transition this water droplet effect and how to make things look like they're clear glass. So really simple tutorial here. It's going to be involving layer effects. In my layers panel, I want to create a new layer that I'm going to create my water drops on. And so create a new layer, lay about the water drops, grab your brush tool, the letter B, and make sure that you have a hard brush. So option control, click on that. And I just want a hard brush. doesn't matter what size the brush is going to be. Make sure you're painting in black so we get a solid color. And on that water drop layer, I'm just going to hit this several times using my left bracket to change the size of my brush smaller and smaller. You don't have to worry about getting perfect dots. You can pull a little bit too if you want some water drips and just vary them up. It doesn't matter if they're touching either. It just makes for a little bit more fun. And there's my little water droplets ready to go. I'm going to apply a filter to this and this is going to be the distort filter and we're going to choose wave. The wave is going to kind of ripple the surface or cause kind of distortion of the water droplets. Now there's no real magic to this. Um, you can go in and control the number of generators. Too many generators start to look kind of squizzle, squizzly, if that's even a word. Um, so I'm going to keep it down to, say, a couple different generators here. And you can control the wavelength to kind of control the distortion of the water droplets here. Um, the amplitude of this is really going to distort them, so I keep it kind of low. Okay. No real science to what I'm doing here. I'm just looking at the preview and kind of seeing how these water droplets are. Okay. So it distorts and I've got some water droplets going different direction. Now I'm going to go to my FX panel and I'm going to drop down to my bevel and emboss. And in the bevel and emboss here, what I want to do is I want to set this to an inner bevel and I want it to be smooth. And we're going to have a depth of 70% a size of 13 and the soften is going to be set to zero and I'm just using my tab key to jump through here okay the highlight mode we're going to set to normal and we're going to have that at white so click on the little white box there and to get your color picker to do that and the shadow mode is going to be set to lighten and it's also going to be set to white and that's going to be 90 percent don't click OK yet because we're not done we're going to apply a drop shadow so we're going to click on the drop shadow button over here we want this to be set to multiply in black and we want it to be at set at 14% and the distance is going to be 5, the spread is going to be 4, and the size is going to be 4. Not done yet because we need an inner shadow. Clicking on the inner shadow, we're going to set that to be a multiply mode. This 2 is going to be black. 15% opacity here and the distance of 5, a choke of 0 and a size of five as well. Not done, we need an inner glow. So jump down to an inner glow here. Again, multiply mode. It's going to be black. This is in a different location here. It's usually up here, but on inner glow, it's down here. Multiply mode, black at 23%, and we're going to click OK. And this is what we see, which is kind of cool. But we're not done because obviously water droplets are not black. We want to make them clear. And so with those water droplets, we go to our layer blending mode and we set those to screen. And anything that we have here shows up with our kind of water droplets. I'm going to go to my new uh, my little half moon here and I'm going to do a new solid color layer. And I'm just going to pick a color here that I think is going to look good kind of as a background color. And then I'm going to drag that behind my water droplet layer and I can see my water droplets. OK, looks pretty cool. But I'd like to save this. I don't want to go through this building this layer effect every time. So go into the window menu, go down to your styles panel, and your styles panel has all these different styles that are created. And styles are nothing more than layer effects that are just saved here. Now, if I click on my water droplet layer, go to my styles panel at the bottom, I'm going to click on the plus. And what it's going to capture is it's going to capture that layer that I have selected and all of its layer effects, including any layer blending options. OK, I click OK. And now it puts it at the bottom. I'm just going to drag it up here into my list. And here is my layer effect right there. 
for use in anything else. Now, it doesn't save the layer effect just in this Photoshop file. It stays in Photoshop no matter what we have open. So this really cool water effect works nice. I love this and it's a style. Now, if I go back into my water droplet layer and I take my brush and I have a little bit of fun here, you can see that I can create all types of water droplets. Now, I don't normally use the smudge tool, but the smudge tool here, if you wanted to go and you wanted to kind of smudge these water droplets, I can grab the smudge tool and I can kind of pull those and distort those a little bit. Now you notice the smudge tool will kind of soften that edge so you get more of a blurry effect on there. So you got to be a little bit careful. Okay? But you can go in and you can just grab your brush tool if you want to and brush. Now if you grab your eraser tool and you have a hard edge eraser, what's cool here is that you can put little holes inside your water droplets like that if you want that to kind of disappear. And you can just kind of drag across there or kind of reshape these as well if you'd like to reshape your water droplets because it's all just a layer effect. So cool stuff, okay? I like that. But with this water droplet effect too, we can actually create this kind of glass effect. So if you wanted to turn something into a glass, into this cool glass effect, you can. So take this butterfly. Maybe I want to make this look like it's a glass butterfly. Now that could be kind of cool. We're going to use that layer style, but what I want to do is I want to capture this butterfly. And the easiest way for me to do that is I'm going to go up to my object selection tool. The mode that I'm going to use is the lasso mode. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to lasso this butterfly. And it's going to take a couple seconds to think about the selection that it's going to make and it grabs the butterfly. I'm not so concerned about the antenna right here. If I wanted to, I would go here, but I'm just gonna grab the butterfly. Back to my layers panel. I'm gonna apply a layer mask so I get that butterfly masked out. I wanna desaturate this because I don't want any colors. I just want tone. I don't want any colors. So I'm gonna go to my half moon, grab my hue and saturation adjustment layer and desaturate that entire butterfly. Jumping over to my channels here, I'm going to grab any one of my channels. Blue is closest, so I'm going to grab the blue, drag that down onto my duplicate button right there. And with my blue copy, I'm going to do a levels, which is Command L. And I'm going to get a very high contrast butterfly here. And this is what I'm going to use as my selection. Now, a lot of the little detail here isn't going to be significant. So if you see all this nice shadow and shading, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get just the explicit detail that I'd like to create. Now, the detail that I'm looking for when I do something like this is anything that's black is going to be like the high surface. Anything that's white is going to be a low surface. So it's if I were to turn this into glass, you'd see that relief effect. So I get a very high contrast image from this channel. I'm going to command click on that channel thumbnail and it's going to give me a selection and I'm going to select the inverse shift command I so I get just that selection. Go back to my composite channel by clicking on the RGB. Go back to my layers here. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to turn off my other layers. With this new layer, which I'm going to call my butterfly, my selection's active here. I'm going to go to my color picker and I'm going to choose black and actually I'm going to choose white to do this. Okay, I could choose black and then just invert it. Either way, it doesn't matter. With my selection active on my new layer here, I'm going to fill that with that color and there is my butterfly. Now I'm going to go under my window menu, call up my styles panel of my previously saved water droplet effect and I'm going to apply that water droplet effect to my butterfly and you can't see this very well. So I do want to put a new fill solid color layer behind this and I'm going to choose something that's going to be kind of a nice blue green, nice turquoise here and drag that behind my butterfly layer. Okay. Now the butterfly doesn't look totally awesome here but if I go in and I change the blending mode on this to say multiply you can see that I get that effect. Now it's kind of hard to see and the reason why is because this particular um, effect that I put on there doesn't have much of a bevel. So I'm going to go into my bevel emboss on my butterfly effects, double click on that, and I'm going to control the depth 
of this so I can see how that looks. And I can also control the size as well. Now once I start to control the size and the depth, you can see all that detail, which used to looks like just a little outline, as I control the size of the depth, it starts to kind of compete and melt with the uh, contours. And as I do this with both the depth and mainly the size, I get this really cool glass effect on my butterfly. And it's quite awesome. Now, multiply is going to work because it's going to take anything that's going to be white and make it disappear, so I get kind of my highlights and shadow effects. If you want to see what controls what in my layer effects, I can go in and poke each one of the effects in the eye here and see which one works best. Now here, turning off the inner glow kind of turns off a little bit of that shadow and this glass effect kind of gets magnified a little bit. Now, if you like what you've done here, you can always take this, go back under your window and open your styles panel, and you can capture this new one here just by clicking on the plus. And I'm gonna call this my glass butterfly in here and click okay. And it's gonna capture that effect in here. So it's a really cool method. Now, if you wanna play around more, I'm gonna go back into my butterfly and click on my bevel and emboss here. And we have different types of bevels. And what's cool, we have an outer bevel. This was applied to the inner bevel. We also have an emboss feature, which kind of creates a little bit different. You get a pillow emboss, which creates a little bit different effect as well. Stroke emboss won't work because there is no stroke on this object, but you can play around with different glass effects. And that's a cool way to be able to create a glass effect on that butterfly. But I'm gonna do this to the flower as well here. So, because, you know, it would be cool to see what it looks like in here. So again, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer by clicking on the half moon at the bottom of the layers panel. Grab my hue and saturation. I'm gonna desaturate my flower. And from this desaturated flower, jump over to my channels, grab my blue channel, drag that onto the plus so I get a copy of it. Do my levels, which is command L, and get a whole bunch of contrast out of this. Great. Command click on that channel thumbnail. Get the inverse of the selection, which is Shift Command I, right there under Select Menu. Click back on my composite, go back to my layer, turn off my original layers, add a new layer, choose white or black. I'm gonna choose black this time because we can always invert it. Option Delete to fill that whole thing with black. And then I've already got my style selected, so I can go back to my styles panel, and I can click on my style, and it's going to apply that effect to my image right there. I'm going to add a new solid color layer there. Pick any color that you'd like, make it look interesting, and drag that behind, and then you get your flower. Now, because this is black to begin with here, you can see it creates a really interesting effect. Of course, if I set this to screen or I set this to multiply, you can see that it's not going to do much difference because we got some white, we got some black in here. If I invert this whole thing just by doing Command I for invert, which is under Image Adjustments Invert here, you can see that I can get kind of this glass effect that's black. If this was filled with black and if I invert it, it's kind of white. Now again, I can turn off my inner glow so I can get more of a glass effect. Double click on my bevel and emboss as well to change that look too, and also the depth as well, which is kind of cool. I can change the direction up or down to create a really interesting effect. And this is how you can create a glass effect out of just about anything. So you can take your water here, and with that same cool effect, and you can go in and do the glass butterfly as well. And anything that you can capture, you can just turn into this super cool glass effect.